Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to show you how to use the calendar inside your Microsoft Outlook. So before I did a tutorial on how to use your Microsoft Outlook email, but today I'm focusing on just the calendar, how to create those events, how to manage those events, how to share those events with other people, adding calendars and more. So let's get started on how to manage your Microsoft Outlook calendar today on Teachers Tech. Everything in this video will be timestamped down below in the description. So if you're looking for something specifically, take a look down there and you can jump to that part of the video. Now, last time when I created my Outlook tutorial, I was focused on the email, this tab right here. This time it's gonna be the calendar tab, which I'm gonna stay in and then go over all the different things I can do in here. Now, the first thing I just wanna do is give you a little walk around of this calendar. And what I wanna show you first is just how to quickly change the view. So right now you can see that you are in month view here. Now you can change the views by taking a look up top under the home tab and then looking at the ribbon here we have, if we wanted to see the day, if we wanted to see the work week, if we wanted to see the week, if we wanted to see the month. And then there's also a schedule of you if I had schedules that would be in there. So you can quickly change that around. Now, looking on the left hand side here, you can see that there's these smaller calendars that allow you to jump to dates very quickly. And I'll get into more of that in a bit. And then we have our calendars down here. So I'll also show you how to add more calendars, even fun and interesting calendars, maybe a favorite sports team or other things. I'll show you how you can add that too. Uh, but uh, if I go back up here, I wanted to point out if uh, ever this, so if I'm gonna just close this, minimize this folder pane here and notice as I click on it, it doesn't show anymore. Uh, if you open it and then just click the pin, like this then you can kind of jump around and this will stay open here so just so you know if you do want these uh, smaller calendars to stay open just go ahead and pin it open like that all right so in any of this if i'm navigating around in these calendars i can jump ahead easily just by going ahead pushing ahead like this and I can go backwards in time too to see past uh, appointments that I had if I needed to check something previously I can do that it's always quick to go back to the date just go up here and hit today just like that and it jumps back to the correct month and the day that I'm on right here you can even see there's a next seven days that it just opens up with your any appointments that you have in it now I can also use these smaller calendars over here to go and pick a date too. So I could uh, pick on uh, pick one in the past and it will jump to there into the day view. I can actually even grab a series of dates. So if I grab and hold and drag across, notice when I do that, the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, that comes into this view here. I do wanna point out too, you, I have two calendars showing here. You can stretch this out too. Notice that when I hover over my mouse and click and drag, I can uh, create more space, more calendars there if you wanna see more. So if I needed to jump ahead, you can see now I pick three days so you can quickly select the dates that you want to to go to that you can add appointments to. Now I want you to take a look right up here where it says Washington DC. So what you're gonna get here is pretty much just the weather here. You can put it to where you want. So if I wanted to add a location, let's say if I wanted to add Vancouver here, like so, spell it correctly, and go ahead Vancouver, and right here we'll put it. And then it's gonna to update to that weather there. I can also make a quick view change here. So if I wanted the day view, I can, adapt up that to what I want to see here. So there's always multiple ways in all the Microsoft products to do different things, whether you're up on the ribbon and looking through the each uh, on each tab or right clicking on things, you're going to get lots of different options. Uh, I wanted to point out now, I'm just going to go back to my uh, month view here and talk about the calendars that are posted. And I want to give you a little tip how to add even more fun calendars here in a moment. So if I look here, uh, my calendar is here. So this this is maybe events that I would be, you know, for work or maybe if I was planning YouTube videos, I'd be adding them to the calendar here. I have another calendar. This is just the United States holidays. So if I click on this one, you get two calendars. So I have 
my personal calendar, but here's another calendar with just holidays. What you can do here, though, is kind of merge them so you can layer them on top of each other. What you can do is hit this little arrow here, and now you're seeing both of them. So you're not eating up all that real estate there. You can see I can go back and uh, close this one if I wanted to, but right now both are selected. They're in one view, and I'm seeing both of them. And you can do this with uh, the different calendars. As you turn on more, if you had more birthdays, then you could put them in. So you're seeing all calendars at once. You just don't have to go uh, to each of them like that. So I, if I close them down, you can see it, it turns them off. So uh, that's just a little tip about managing those calendars. But now I wanna give you a tip of how you can add something interesting to your calendar. I just logged in on the web to my Microsoft 365 account. And remember, you can open up Outlook here on the web. You don't need to be connected with your installed app on your computer. So I am going to go to Outlook right now and you can see it's right here. It's going to look very similar. It's not as powerful as the um, as the app for the downloaded on the Windows here. But what I wanted to point out was uh, if I go to calendars and I'm just going to click on here, and I'm going to go to my calendar, looks kind of similar. Uh, what I want to do is add a calendar here. Now, what I'm going to do is click on this add calendar and you can see there's recommended and everything. I'm going to go ahead and go to sports and I'm going to add, since it's football season right now, I'm going to go ahead and go to the NFL and I'm going to go and add the Los Angeles Rams. If I was following them, I want to make sure I know all the games there. You can see you can pick all of them. And just like that, I've added them. So you can see if I close out of this now, it's here on my web version. But now when I go back and open up, open up my Outlook the next time, it's going to be here too. So I'm back on my desktop here uh, with the Microsoft Outlook app. Now, if I look over, you can see the Los Angeles Rams are there. I can go ahead and click and turn it on and it opens up. Notice it's on the left-hand side. Well, that's because it's at the top of it. So I can quickly just drag it down. If I click and hold and drag it, it changes the, changes the order very quickly. So I can bring it to the bottom if I want. And now it moves to the other side. I can do my overlay like I showed you before. You can delete any of these calendars quickly if you want. Uh, what I like to do is right click on it just like this and you can see we have delete calendar. I have my move up and move down like I did before. I can rename it. I could change the color of the calendar. So you have these different options. Uh, so if I go and a different way you can do this is always look up to the top in to the different tabs and then the ribbon. In this case, if I go to uh, just up here with the folder, I'm already clicked on it, so you can click on the folder tab and you'll see that you have some options to delete, move, copy, calendar, even add a calendar. So if I'm going to go back to the home and notice that the add calendar is there, there are multiple places. I added a uh, calendar of interest. You can also add a blank calendar here. I'm just going to click off these ones here, turn this off. If I go up to add calendar, you can see I can create a blank calendar from here. I could go ahead and name it. And then maybe if it was a calendar of just my YouTube videos, I was gonna place events in. So I'd have a separate calendar to keep track of just my, when I was creating those videos. And that would be added and work the same way as these other calendars here. So if I go ahead and uh, create this here and hit okay, I have YouTube right here. Maybe I want to color it. I right click on it. I go to color. I'll make this this color here just so it stands out. You can see the color up here. So that's just some options in creating a calendar. I just want to point out too, you could add calendars from other people in your organization if they've shared them out. So what I mean is if you come up here to add calendar and drop down, you could add it from an address book. So if I was, if I knew the person I was searching for of the company, I could go ahead and search it and find them and add their calendar, but they would have to make sure they've shared it out to do that. So how do you share out your calendar? You can see 
right beside here. So if I was part of an organization and I wanted to share my calendar out, I drop down and let's say if it was this one here, I get these options here where I can choose what do I want people to see. Right now you can see it's defaulted, can view when I'm uh, busy, but you can change this too. They can view all the details, they can edit. So you pick what you'd want them to add. And if you wanted to add people, you know, once you share this out, then people could add your calendar to it. So that's important later on, especially when you're scheduling meet meetings uh, with your Outlook calendar to be able to be efficiently finding that time when you can schedule them. So the first type of appointment I want to show you how to add to your Microsoft Outlook calendar is just that one where it's going to be about managing your life. It's just kind of a reminder that can pops up Get, you get reminded of it. It's nobody else you need to add to it. And I'm going to go ahead about a month here. I'm going to go to October and let's say I'm going to make up something that's going to be on the 12th here. I'm going to double click in here and notice I get this pop up. I double clicked on that place and I get the uh, event that I can start putting the information in. There's a few different ways you can do that. That's how I tend to do it. You can right click and go new appointment right here and you can go new all day event also. So you can create it from that right click and you can see the different options you get. You can also go up top here. So if I have it selected, I could go new appointment and it's going to open the same thing. The difference between that all day thing, notice that this little check here, and I'm going to make two different events here to show you the difference, how it looks in your calendar. So let's say on this day, I have to take my boys to swim club for practice. And I'm just going to say, uh, I'll put swim club as the title and I can pick a time in here. So I'll say it's going to be at 6 PM and it's going to last one hour. Notice I can do, I can switch it to all day if it was, I can pick time zones by selecting this and then uh, adjusting it. If you're, you know, if you're traveling, you can pick that uh, to make those adjustments. Is there a location? I can do a search right in here. So maybe I'm going to Calgary uh, swimming here. So I'm gonna say swimming and notice I get different pools. Maybe it's at this pool here and I get the exact location in there. I could add a note to this. So maybe I got to remember to say pay fees or something like that. I can, so I don't forget, I add that. Uh, and you can see that uh, there are a lot of other options that you have up top in here. Uh, I, this is Microsoft Outlook 365 I'm using. So I do actually have a dictate in here. So I could click on this and just talk into this and it'll put my, uh, put my notes if I want into it too. Uh, also, if I need to insert anything, was there a file that I need inserted? So is there something from my computer? I could go through here, grab an, you know, a certain file, a picture, a PDF, and add it to it. So I'd have everything in the right place. And you can take a look at all the different things that you can add once I'm selecting in, selected in here from pictures and everything to shapes and screenshots to it. So I'm going to just go back uh, to the appointment and let's say this was all done. Uh, right here. Do I want a reminder of this? When do I want to be reminded 15 minutes before? Well, maybe I have to drive an hour, so I don't want to be reminded 15 minutes before. I want to be reminded uh, two hours before in this case. So you set when you want the reminder. When you're all done, you can go ahead and hit save and close. So I have this event here. Now I'm just going to quickly make another event beside it here. Uh, and you can see if I click once, I could start typing in here too to get my, uh, so let's say it, if on this day there was a swim meet. So notice when I just typed that in, there was an event here on, on this day and it went all day uh, just by just clicking once and then typing in the in information. So what does this look like, uh, the difference between these two? I'm just going to go to week view to show you. If I go to week here, and I'm actually on the wrong week here. I believe it was the week before. There it is, swim meet. And now, right, since this is an all day thing, this comes at the beginning of the day. So it just puts it up top here. But when it's a specific time, if I scroll down, you'll see at 6 p.m. this one is listed. So the all days will get put right at the beginning. So that is kind of your simple way to put an appointment to. Now I want to show you how you can add people to this to create a uh, maybe a meeting that you can make sure everybody knows that is happening.
With these events, you can go back and edit them too. If I select on, and I'm clicking on the blue part here, uh, notice I have an open option here, or I could just double click and it's gonna open it up again and I can make any changes to this. And at any point, even if you make just a kind of event to help yourself, you can right click and invite attendees. So if you thought you made an, you made an appointment and you're like, oh no, I can invite people uh, to this one, and you can go and add people and that will make more sense. I'll show you how to in the meeting that I'm about to make in a moment. I just want to point out too, with uh, creating a, an event or appointment on a different calendar, if I go over, let's say YouTube, if I select this one, now if I pick a date and I'll just pick the 18th, if I pick this date, take a look at the very bottom here in folder YouTube. So now I know what uh, that what appointment, what folder or what calendar this is going to be created on here. So I could go ahead and tell myself, well, I'm making a video for Outlook and I'm, I know it's going to be on that on this one here. So I could, if I go ahead and just save and close it, now it's gonna be on my YouTube calendar. You can tell right away, even by the color that's highlighted there versus the blue of this one. Now you can go back, I can delete this, click on it, select it, delete, and it's gone uh, from there too. Now let's talk about inviting people to uh, a group uh, or a meeting with people. So I could right click just like I showed you before, and we can go to new meeting request. Now, if I go to new meeting up here, it would do the same thing. So I could click on it and right away it creates an email because what it's gonna do is send an email out to the people to confirm if they can go to this, uh, to this meeting or not. And that's why you're seeing where it's from me and be going to be sent out. So what is this gonna be about? Let's say I have a coaches meeting here and when is it going to be? Yes, Monday. This coming on this Monday coming up uh, in October. So I'm going to change the time here. It's going to be one hour long from eight to nine in the morning. Uh, this is actually going to be reoccurring too. So reoccurring. Uh, how often? This every Monday is uh, good. This could be every Monday and Friday. Um, I could go back and change the reoccurrence at a layer at a time and delete it. I'll show you how to do it after I create it. Or let's say if it was going to be Monday, Friday, I would select there. I'll just leave it as Monday. You can see the different uh, uh, different things you can adjust. I'll hit OK and it tells me when this is going to start and how I'm, I can edit it from here. I can add people here. So um, with these demo accounts that I have, I could add uh, people from this part, or I could go to my address book and add people uh, to it too. But I'll add one more. I'll add another different uh, demo account here and make this optional uh, for uh, this account here. So just like that. So we have required people and optional here. I could give it a location by just doing the same thing that I did before. I'm not going to be worried about location in this one, but I can find, a, you know, so a room finder. So if your administrator of your uh, Microsoft account has the rooms added in, they can select this, then you would have different buildings in different rooms. And this would go into a schedule that would uh, not allow people to take that room. If you've already have that one in your calendar, they would see a conflict in that. And you're not going to be able to see the rooms that someone else has at that time. It wouldn't be available. So you would just select your building or your rooms that are set up through your administrator, your tech administrator. Uh, I'm not going to add a room on that one because I haven't added any in my account. So other things I want to point out here, the scheduling assistant. So as I added these people to the email, I would be able to see their scheduling if they've shared their calendars. And I'm going to show you how to share calendars in a, in a moment uh, because in the workplace that works well. If you have your meetings and you can share it with somebody else, they would be able to look in the scheduling to see if there's any conflicts or when is the best time to book this meeting. They could see the, that opening, uh, the space there. Uh, and you can see where I can still add rooms and I could search for a room if I needed to right through the scheduling assistant here. I'm just gonna go back to meeting series uh, on this one. And I just wanna point out too, how you can connect it with Microsoft Teams so you can create a new Teams meeting if you needed to video conference through there. You can even add your Microsoft OneNote, uh, great place to take notes connected in here. So just a few other options. And also just like I mentioned before, with the insert, uh, you can attach your files. Maybe you need to show a presentation or PowerPoint to 
to the group, you could go ahead and attach it here and then it would be able to, uh, you know, so you just have it there and people could open it up and look at it uh, if, if you were doing it that way, if there are different places. But you can take a look uh, at the different things you can add and put your info of the meeting right in here that you want people to know about. I'm just going to go back to the uh, meeting series here uh, and I'm going to go ahead and hit send this. So people are going to get uh, uh, a email and they based on this so this response request responses allow time new time proposals and allow forwarding so these are my response options here i'm going to go ahead and, and hit send on this so when they get the email i want you know them to say yes they're attending or maybe they suggest a new time that would work better so i would go ahead and send this and you say i don't have a, a location but i'm going to send anyway i'm not worried about that and instantly it gets put to this and notice i was on my youtube calendar there you can see right away by the uh by the calendar color there so depending on uh which one you'd want you got to make sure you have your correct uh, calendar selected now i can go and change this too if i right click on this notice where i can cancel meeting cancel occurrence would be just that one day if i cancel the series it would delete all of them and then they would get an email back saying that it's been canceled I do want to point out here up top the search. So if you once you get a lot of different meetings, uh, you might need uh, to search for different things. So if I was just going to be, if I type coaches, you can see it does a search and it found an occurrence of where coaches is used and I could go to that event and open up. So take advantage of this search up top, it went, especially once you get a lot of different events and appointments inside your Microsoft Outlook calendar. I hope this video helped you with Microsoft Outlook with the calendar option. Let me know what else you're looking to learn with Microsoft Outlook calendar or other options too. I still have more videos coming out about Outlook. Thanks for watching this week on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.